Five seconds to go. Start. The calling card of India against corruption (IAC) has been indignant virtue. Its virtue derives from its leadership's record of public service. Its indignation is directed at the corruption in India's public life. The appeal and drawing power of various indignation lies in the brazen dishonesty of the political establishment and the middle classes' gift for seeing itself as the blameless victim of a parasitic state. Arvind Kejriwal, the strategist of the Anna Hazare movement, displayed an early appreciation of television as a means of magnifying virtue in the early days. Before the first Jantar Mantar fast made Anna a household name, he drew Baba Ramdev into the movement because of the drawing power of Ramdev's television persona. At that time, he was uncertain whether Anna's charisma as a provincial activist would scale up to fill a national stage. After the landmark Ramlila Ground fast, which delivered the remarkable spectacle of India's imperious political class waiting upon a fasting septuagenarian's every move. Anna's success in creating a civil society juggernaut seemed complete. Parliament promised a Lokpal law based on the Jan Lokpal bill and Anna's moral authority as a Gandhian fasting, his way to martyrdom or political victory briefly eclipsed Parliament's standing as the republic's selected legislature. From that high noon, Anna and his colleagues found themselves cast into the shadows as Leviathan reasserted itself. Using its limitless ability to procrastinate, the state denied the IAC its prize, a Lokpal bill it could point to as the first fruit of its popular mobilization. The IA's response each time there was an impasse was another fast by Anna. It became a travelling repertory company with just one play in its repertoire and the inevitable happened. The public stopped buying tickets. IAC then decided to support virtuous candidates fielded by others in elections. As the antagonism between it and the UPA became more acute, this position became indistinguishable from sporting candidates opposed to the UPA. This partnership was justified on the grounds that the governing coalition was principally responsible both for corruption and for stalling corruption secure the Lokpal bill. This turned out to be an unsatisfactory manure. Anna's movement could not plausibly claim credit for the UPA's electoral defeats and its moral authority as a movement that transcended politicking seemed compromised by its anti-UPA stance. Anna's facts once trump cards became liabilities. Instead of being buoyed up by an enormous public presence, Anna was embarrassed by its absence. The reiteration of the movement's monopoly of public virtue began to sound hectoring and self-righteous. The failure of the current fast at Jantar Mantar to draw crowds or drum up monster media attention led to an abrupt end to the fasting. An enigmatic announcement said that the IAC would supply a political and electoral alternative to India's corrupt parties. Whether this was an improvised response to the failure of the fast or a long-standing intention, it represented an advance on the fast and fulminate tactic that had thus far characterized the movement. Stop.